The reason most of you probably will or purchase this customizer software is for the part I will show you in this lesson. It's the lettering part. What can we do with it? And most important, how do we do it? Let's get started. Let's go over here to the lettering icon and make a right hand click on top. As soon as you do that, the object properties will come up. In here, the white part, you will write your quilt label, your name, wherever you would like to stitch out on your embroidery machine. Here is my favorite word, Bernina. The alphabet you can choose from all true type fonts on your hard drive. Any true type fonts you will load onto your hard drive are to your disposal. Let's take this Calibri. The height is 14 millimeter. Let's make it a little bit higher. Let's go to 25. I'm going to leave the width alone and I'm not going to italic to the left or to the right and the letter spacing I leave alone. I would like to write this straight so the baseline is going to be straight. I'm going to say OK and nothing happens. Every time nothing happens on the screen and you think something should happen, look here at the bottom left hand side. It says press mouse button to start the text. I click and here is my banana written into the embroidery hoop. If I zoom in, I see that the letters are in artistic view. They look like they've been stitched already. If I switch it with this little icon up here, I see them in that funky color, magenta, but that would mean I know they are selected. When they're in that color, I can almost see through the lettering and I can see how it is stitched. You see that there is a middle line going through before it actually stitches the satin stitch on top of it. If I make a double click on top, the letters come back up just in case I made a spelling mistake. I can go back and correct it. Here on the top, I have another tab called fill stitch. As you see here in the back, I have a satin stitch selected. You have also the choice to go to a step stitch. In order for you to see this a little bit better, I'm going to click on the canvas. I'm going to switch to artistic view with my T key. Now I see those letters are in satin stitch. If I go back over here with the step stitch selected and I choose step stitch number one or step stitch number two, I just hit apply. And if the letters are selected in the back, and I hit apply, you will see that it's now stitched with the step stitch. So you got 30 different step stitch to your disposal. And you can adjust the stitch length and the spacing from each of those. To show you an example, the stitch spacing from one stitch to the other right now is 0 0.4. So if I put in one, you can just guess that it really is going to look pretty ugly. So if I hit apply, now you can see what happened. You can see the under stitching very good before it actually stitches the stuff on top of it. What else can I do? Let's go under effects. Ah, the effects is the underlays, underlay one, underlay two. Let's turn the underlay two off. Let's watch over here what it's doing when I hit apply. Something came off, as you can see. And if the letters are so small that I can hardly use an underlay, I can even take this off, hit apply, and you see there is basically no underlay underneath. So here you can adjust the underlay, turn that on, turn that off, adjust it the way you would like it or until your letter stitches out perfectly. Under others, we have the pull compensation. Pull compensation is a measuring that will 
overstitch the letter, make the letter a little bit wider because the program knows once you stitch the letter the fabric will shrink underneath so by the time it's stitched out the letters have the size you wanted it from the beginning so here you have three choices of pull compensation this is something you're just going to have to play with it if you run into a problem so I'm going to say okay close this and cancel this out I click on Benina and delete it I go over here make a right hand click again write the name but this time I will use the circle so I will write Benina on top of the circle the baseline radius is 50 millimeters let's just leave it like that I don't know if this is good enough or not I say OK once again on the bottom left hand side it tells me enter center point so apparently he is looking for the circle the center point of the circle so I'm gonna click I just click and now it says enter the point of circumference but I told him already I wanted 50 millimeters radius so I just hit the enter button and now Bernina is written in a 50 millimeter radius onto my screen if I want to change the radius I just double click on the lettering and change this to 75 now I would not even have to go out again I just can hit apply and you see the curve is a little bit less if you like the lettering to be stitched on the bottom right from here you could click on the last base radius and just hit apply and now the letters are written in the other way going to say OK click on it and cancel it let's do this again I make a right hand click on the lettering write my name I still leave the baseline as a curve and say OK on the bottom left it tells me enter the center point so I just click and the next thing it tells me enter the point of circumference as I pull up I'm making a circle if I click again that's now my radius it says now enter for a circle or enter an oval the circle we did already if I would hit enter now it makes a perfect circle I'm not interested in this right now so I'm gonna pull it to the left and voila here I can make my football I click and it's ready I hit enter uh oh what happened it rolled it to the left of my football what can I do about it hmm well not much if I just look at it there is no editing function like at the entire program where I could slide this on top of the curve why does it write like this let me show you I double click on it there is something missing it's not missing because the program didn't install correctly it's just missing because it's not here the justification is not here normally you would have left middle and right justification that's not happening here so the only way I can move this word on top of the baseball and you know exactly what I mean now I want this that uh, since the baseball is like this and I don't know why I'm saying baseball it's a football I guess I'm not playing either one of them that's the reason I don't know the difference is I go on the front of this Bernina and make some empty spaces because it should be justified in the middle hit apply aha uh -huh. you see it's coming yep
maybe one more and now Bernina would be on top of that football so you will not find this in the manual so you got to put those spaces in if you would like that slim curve on top of it or let's assume you are going to write another Bernina in front of it so let's just do that I'm going to paste Bernina back in here and let's have two of them and say apply now you see what I mean they're gonna go around the curve now let's go behind here let's make a space and write this two more times and hit apply and now you have Bernina on the top and on the bottom just like that so even though you're sort of restricted with the program you can see if you take the time and play a little bit you will figure out a lot of things that maybe went missing but you still can do it last but not least if you would like to change the color of this lettering you just select it and select the paint chip on the bottom and it instantly changes the color for you I hope you know a little bit more how to do those letterings and I will see you next time.